So what I want to show you guys here is a simple little watershed demonstration and a little educational piece. Use it if it's uh, useful for you. So uh, what I do is I create this little mini mountain range. Okay, so we've got um, a little bowl-like shape here. Uh, we've got a little canyon here, bigger canyon, alluvial fan. Um, and the idea is I try and create three, at least two subwater sheds, um, potentially three. And then we want the students to identify the boundary of the watershed. So start off like this. What is a watershed? Okay, a watershed is the total surface area shedding water to a certain point. Okay, um, and uh, the boundary of that watershed is the ridge line. So for example here, if we were looking at this rock, what is the watershed for this rock? It would be the total surface area shedding water or draining water to that rock. But notice here we got the ridge line, all the water hitting this side goes somewhere else. So that's a separate watershed. So we want to see what's the watershed for this rock. So Jill, I'd like to ask you to, uh, with your finger, make a line delineating what is the boundary of this watershed or what is the ridge line. And uh, I like to say, finger it out, since she's making the line with her finger. So I would guess it would be this. Okay, so that looks great to me. And at this point, I would then ask the rest of the class if they felt that was good, if things needed to be changed or whatnot. So they become the teachers. And uh, so I would say this is correct, but it could be expanded a little bit more. So, and this is where we'd really want to be eyeballing it. Maybe this works, maybe it doesn't, but it looks to me like this may be part of the watershed as well is this might slope in as well, just a little bit. So I think it's more like that, okay? Um, and uh, so that's great. We have the watershed for this rock. And now, Jill, I'd like you to come around me here. And what is the watershed for this rock? Okay, I would think. Finger it out. Awesome, great job, Jill. Of course, I would ask the, the rest of the class what they thought, but since it's just you and me today, I'll give you the positive affirmation right off the bat. So here, we've got water sloping away on this side of the ridge and then away, but everything here is flowing to the rock. So uh, this is the uh, watershed for this rock. I might uh, stop the line a little higher because below this line, it's draining away. So right there, we've got the watershed uh, for that rock. And I want you to um, then, Jill, come to this next rock. Okay. And what is the watershed for it? Okay, I would think if I was going to do, make it really big, maybe. I don't know about coming up here. Let's do it. I like that. I like the way you're going. Yeah. All right. Yep. So Jill did excellent right there, and she she got my curveball. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, and notice we got a little ridge here, so even. This slopes towards the rock, she got that, okay? So you see that we have all of this. So this watershed is part of this watershed. So this is a sub-watershed of this larger watershed, okay? However, this is not a sub-watershed of that one because this is downslope. This water won't make its way up. Um, but all the water draining to this rock will also drain to this rock. So this sub-watershed is part of this larger watershed. And this sub-watershed for this rock is 
oh, or the sorry, this the watershed for this rock is also a sub watershed for this rock because it too drains to this rock. And the important part about watersheds and sub watersheds is if we want to start to harvest and and interact with the water uh, in our watershed, I think it's important that we start as high as possible in the watershed where we're dealing with less volume, less velocity. Um, so I'd want to start up there, okay? Um, because if I create these little berms or rain gardens up here, they don't need to be anywhere near as big as they would down here if I was collecting all that water. So we start with small structures and step it all down. So I'd probably, and so I like to break big watersheds up into small sub watersheds. So I'd start there. The next place I'd probably go is here. Start at the top there and work down. And I'd only do this one last. But the thing is, since I'm starting in that sub-watershed, in that sub-watershed, I'm actually starting at the top of the watershed for this rock, because those are both sub-watersheds for this one. Okay? Um, and I just want to point out the curveball that Jill got, but many students don't, is this rock. Oftentimes, people assume that this water won't come down here, because it's a bowl. But should that bowl fill up and overflow, then yes, it too will be part of this watershed. So that's the curveball. Jill, do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably good I got them right since I am a watershed educator. <laughs> so the more water we can absorb into the soil, higher in the watershed, the better it is for the watershed, the bay, everything. Because we're not just capturing water within these water catchments, we capture organic matter. We also capture potential contaminants like uh, herbicides or pesticides coming off people's yards um, or oils coming off the road. And if we've already caught water and caught organic matter in these earthworks, we're creating a living sponge that's also a great media to bioremediate or organically uh, filter some of those contaminants. And we interface with it higher in the watershed where there's not such a great volume of contaminants. It's easier to deal with. So the fungal communities living within the mulch, the soil life can help somewhat digest and convert those toxins, bioremediate those toxins so they're no longer so toxic. And it also controls flooding. Instead of a peak flood spike of water flying through here and causing flooding downstream, we greatly reduce that. And so the more we can sponge up, infiltrate, remediate up here, the much healthier our bay will be, our creeks will be, um, our aquifer will be.